Hey everyone, Ted Branshaw here, Farm Bill Biologist with the Southeastern Grasslands Initiative and Quail Forever. Here with a, another Invasive of the Week video for you guys. This week we're looking at common teasel. So let's take a look. Alright, so this here is our common teasel. Scientific name, uh, Dipsicus phalonum, I believe. It might be Sylvestris now, I'm not sure on the epithet. And it's in the Dipsaceae family, or the teasel family. Uh, there is one other teasel you could mix this up with, but they're both European, not native, and I'll have an image at the end to show you the difference, but it's pretty easy. And I'll point it out once we see the character in this. But it's a flowering plant, and it's a short-lived perennial or a biennial, meaning it'll spend its first year as a rosette like this. This is the common teasel in its first year. This is its common teasel or the, in its second year. So it spends its first year gathering nutrients and then it flowers. And then it dies after, so you don't have to worry about any rhizomes or runners or anything. It just spreads by seed. Identification's easy. That flower shape is quite unique and common. The flowers are going to be violet as opposed to white in cut leaf. Uh, and it is an inflorescence too, so just note that all of those are little tiny flowers. They're their own unique flower. A group of them is just an inflorescence, so this is an inflorescence. Uh, but unique inflorescences, they're very spiny on the stems. The leaves are opposite each other. So leaf here, leaf directly opposite each other, and then they're connected. The leaf will get out of the way. They're connected at the uh, around the stem, and the leaves have a very uh, obvious white midrib that underneath is uh, spiny as well. So you see this, you're not really going to mistake it for anything else, and then you can, you know, you got teasel. Uh, the difference in cut leaf, they'll look the same really as uh, basil rosettes. But as old, uh, they get older and they have the stalks and the leaves up here uh, will have, you know, cuts into them. That's where the cut leaf comes from. They have indentations. Uh, but I'll have an image at the end showing exactly what I mean for comparison. Uh, treating them is luckily relatively easily, or relatively easy. Uh, they don't have rhizomes or runners they spread through. They just spread through seed. But... If you let them seed and maybe mow them after they've seeded, you just end up spreading it around. And that's no bueno. I'm showing you this because there's a lot of teasel in there. Uh, this is just a disturbed, like, waste-ish area. Uh, but, I mean, it gets pretty out of control pretty quickly. Uh, some of those stems are maybe dead from last year's. They will hold on to those at times. Uh, if they're not disturbed, but uh, to remove them, you can just dig out the rosettes as shown, or just you know dig out the base of the plant, or you can spray them with herbicide when they're in the rosette form to kill them so they don't get to the seed stage. Uh, and if you have adults like this, one of the best things you can do, other than spraying them and trying to kill them, is if you can keep them mowed. So you let them go to flower like they are now. This is in July later July in Kentucky and you let them start to flower right before now rather and then cut them keep an eye on them to make sure they don't re-sprout and then that way they tried to reproduce they all died they didn't reproduce successfully now you have no more teasel at least that's the hope so that's your invasive of the week common teasel